Hey there everybody, Coach Brandon here again uh, for more of our seated hook sweeps and I'm just making this as a bonus video. Uh, there's just too much content to cover for seated hook sweeps in one video so I split it up into two separate videos. One that covered most of our general approach and then this one that's going to have a lot of uh, special kind of niche subtopics within the hook sweep. Um, uh, different specialized grips we can use some troubleshooting issues when either our opponent's sinking their weight back and away or they get a posted hand to the floor. And then we're going to look at some other fallback options, um, like going into Ashigurami if the hook sweep fails, um, if my opponent stands, last of the hook sweep. And then uh, we're going to close it with some no gi options because everything we've done so far in these videos has been gripping options with the gi, the belt grip, the lapel, over the back of the scapula. But I want to make sure you guys have some options so you can use these grips in nogi settings as well. Okay, so we're first going to get started with a couple specialized uh, gripping strategies to help us get the breakthrough. If you remember, our attacks from bottom position are done in basically a three-step sequential sequence. We establish some sort of working grip. We want that working grip to be able to bring us to step number two off-balancing our opponent. Once our opponent's out of balance, then number three, we go to our finishes. Most of our finishes are going to be very similar to today, uh, or to the previous video. Reverse shrimping, post legs, like a post leg or a drive leg, and a foot sweep. So those are all going to stay relatively the same. But let's look at a couple different gripping strategies. The first one we're going to look at is arguably one of the best grips for a hook sweep. I know I said in the last video, over the back, belt grip is one of the best. And I, I still hold true to that. That is absolutely one of the strongest grips. But this grip we're going to show you next is also an incredibly strong, powerful grip for a hook sweep. It's the overhook cross collar grip. So in a situation where I have a point on, on his knees, if I'm here, he starts punching in for an underhook. I can take an overhook on him where I pull his elbow through and I reach and I wrap over his arm. This is similar to our arm trap. The next grips I'm going to show you, the arm trap grip, has this similar feature where I'm over his arm, elbow to elbow, where my elbow controls and dominates his elbow from the outside. With this one, the overhook cross collar grip, I'm going to take a straight grip here and I'm going to feed into my cross collar grip. So now I'm controlling Ann's head and his arm through one of my arms. This is such a strong grip, very, very powerful. I could even use this grip to go into cross choking activity. Okay, very good grip. But for now, we're gonna use it for hook sweeping. So again, Ann digs into an underhook. I go over, I open the straight lapel, I feed to a cross lapel grip, and I have that overhook. Now from here, my second hand is gonna go on his post. So we have one torso grip and one post grip, just like we showed in the previous video for this week. I'm gonna use my post grip to take his hand in toward his center line, pushing it in. Now from here, I'm gonna use my overhook cross collar grip to help pull Ant out of balance. Just like we did before, I'm gonna look where I wanna throw Ant. So I turn and I look up toward that 10.30 or 11 o'clock area or quadrant. From here, I, for, I pull my body weight down to the forward momentum, committing my right shoulder to the mat and forcing Ant up into that uh, tripod position. Elevate it here. And then from here, you can fin finish with whichever option you like to complete the hook sweep. Here we ended with that overhook cross collar grip, see? So that is an incredibly strong grip, and you would do well to make it part of your study for the hook sweep. Overhook, cross collar. Another grip which works incredibly well for hook sweeps, also incredibly strong. I would argue, again, just as strong or nearly as strong as the over the back belt grip. And this is the notion of an arm trap. Let's switch sides, Ant. 
So with an arm track, the idea is for me to get a cross cuff grip. If you remember in the previous video, in the main video, we looked at using a cross cuff grip to pull his arm across, get a grip on the back, and then when he pulls his arm back, we're left with an underhook belt grip. Okay, so I just want you guys to be able to see how these connect. I want you to be able to relate these to other techniques you've previously learned or know. This time, when I grip and pull, rather than setting my grip on the belt, I'm going to grip and pull, and then I'm going to cover his elbow with my elbow. I'm going to punch through until the crook of my elbow meets his tricep above his elbow. If I'm below his elbow and can easily pull his elbow back and I don't actually have any sort of control. But when I get my elbow above his elbow here and I stop Ant from being able to pull away from me by taking an underhook on the far side and pulling in with this underhook. Now, if Ant were to try to use his right hand as any sort of base out to his right hand side, go ahead Ant, his arm is completely trapped in the inside position. Okay. So I grab, cross, cuff. I can even take a two-on-one grip, cuff and elbow, and I start to pull this across. From here, we've seen I can pull it all the way across and expose the back. We've seen I can pull it across enough to get to the belt and be left with an underhook belt grip. Otherwise, like I'm showing now, I can pull this across cover elbow to elbow, and now I need to make sure he stays close to me. So my other arm needs to shoot through, take an underhook, and hug him to me. If I don't hug Ant to me, if I just stop here, Ant can pull his head back and away, and he can free that arm. So I've got to have some sort of grip, I'm using an underhook now, to keep him pulled to me. So if Ant were to try to pull his head back and away, my underhook keeps him to me. So a combination of the arm trap on one side and the underhook on the other, meaning that when Ant tries to free his right arm, it's pretty well trapped. So I pull across, I feed it elbow to elbow, I punch in an underhook and I get ear to ear right here. Now, when Ant tries to pull the arm out, very tough. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna commit my left shoulder to the floor. I'm gonna look up over here in this one o'clock or one thirty quadrant. If you imagine that twelve o'clock is straight behind me, six o'clock shoots out of Ant's tailbone. So twelve o'clock is where his head is, six o'clock is where the tailbone is. I'm gonna take him up toward one o'clock or one thirty. So I get my two grips, I'm gonna look where I want to throw him, I'm gonna throw him up toward one thirty. He's gonna base out with his right toes. And now, as I try to sweep, he can hop with his, his right toes, but as we know, I can finish with either a reverse shrimp, a posted drive leg, or a foot sweep. Now, this variation, where I go through and I get an arm trap, getting my elbow to dominate his elbow from the outside, it is so, so hard for him to catch his base. Okay, I would say it's even harder from the base. I, you guys could even see in the video probably. He was struggling more to hop on his right toes on this side with that arm trap. And it's just so, it's so much harder for your opponent to base when you have an effective arm trap. So again, I would argue that this arm trap is just as strong as, that, as those belt grips and as the overhook cross collar grip. Okay, let me show it one more time. Let me show it from another angle. So I get a cross cuff grip. I pull his arm across, I feed through to get, so I can dominate his elbow from the outside. Now to stop him from being able to pull back and away, I immediately release the cuff, I shoot here and I get an underhook, and I use that underhook to hug him to me, so I'm chest to chest. So now if Ant tries to free his right arm, it's well caught. Now I'm gonna look back toward one o'clock or 1.30, I'm going to commit all of my body weight down to the floor as I elevate Ant and try to force his head close to the mat. Now he's going to base with his right toes and 
as I go out, he hops and hops. I drive, I play to the floor, drive myself up, and I go up to the top position. Now, what if I dominate his elbow from the outside with this arm trap, but he's able to slip his hand to the mat? What if I go here, but in the time that I'm trying to go to this underhook, he swims his hand here? Now we go right back to our overhook cross, cross collar grip. And we go back to the same technique we just saw previously. So the arm trap and the overhook cross collar grip work very well as a paired attack. If I pull across and I'm able to keep Ant's hand trapped on the inside, I go to an arm trap sweep on this side. If he's able to free his hand and get it to the floor, well now I can control this lapel and I go back to sweeping to this direction. Now, let's talk about troubleshooting this a little bit. And that side-to-side -side dilemma with the arm trap and the overhook cross collar grip actually leads very well into our next topic of this video, which is side-to-side -side hook sweeps. We're going to get start getting into troubleshooting. We're going to look at two problems my opponent can present to me. He can either sink his weight down and away from the side I want to sweep to, so it becomes very difficult for me to load his weight up. We're going to look at how to deal with that. And then we're going to look at with an opponent who's successfully able to plant their hand to the floor as a base of support. Let's deal with the sinking their body weight back and away first, okay? So in a situation, I go through, I get my grips. Maybe it's over the back, maybe it's under the arm, whatever it is, right? I'm here, and it's no secret the direction I'm going to sweep Ant. I'm controlling this hand. I have this underhook. Ant knows what I'm going for. He's not stupid. So what people are going to do, they're going to post their left leg. They're going to, nice and wide, they're going to sink their weight back and away. They're going to lower their weight. They're going to lower their head. Plant, nice strong plant. Yes. So when I go to, when I go to um, off balance Ant, and he sinks his weight back and away, he feels like he weighs a thousand pounds. Okay? This can be an effective way to stop the hook sweep. But, Ant is so committed with his body weight back in the other direction that a hook sweep in the opposite direction becomes fairly easy. Okay, so when I set my grips, let's go back so I can see the, the, uh, the defensive posture again. When I set my grips, maybe over the back belt grip this time, and I take this, and now Ant, yes, post that leg out. He sinks his body weight back onto his right hip. And I try to come through and I try to sweep him. It's just not gonna happen, okay? But I can sweep him in the other direction. So this is what we call a side-to-side -side hook sweep. This is another variation of a multi-directional dilemma where if he gives me his weight, if he were to drop his left knee to the floor, and he doesn't sink his weight back and away, I take him this way. If he props that leg up, he sinks his weight back and away, now I look at taking him the other way. All I'm going to do is I'm going to shift my hips a little bit. I'm going to make a hook on this posted leg. So now rather than using a left butterfly hook to sweep, I'm going to use my right butterfly hook on this leg. My left arm is going to come down from the belt grip, and I'm going to go and control his arm so that my hand covers his elbow and so that my elbow covers his hand. So if he were to try to base with his right hand right now, he can't. You guys can't see it right now, but I'll show from another angle shortly. My right hand comes off the post, and I go up and I take a grip on the torso. Maybe I'll come up here and I'll take a grip just around the tricep. Now, you don't need the strongest grips for this because he's already committing his body weight in the direction of the sweep. He's essential, you're essentially sweeping him in the direction that he's leaning all of his body weight to. So it becomes very easy. So from here, I'm gonna make a butterfly hook right here, driving off my left toes on the floor and elevating with my right leg, pulling with this grip on the tricep. We duck him down to the floor, and we come up to the top position. Let's show that with another angle. So once again, I set my grips. I want to sweep Ant to this side. He cocks that leg up. He sinks all of his weight back and away. So when I go to hit a hook sweep to my right hand side, I'm never going to move him. No problem. 
since he is sinking all of his weight to his right hand side, I'm going to sweep him to his right, my left, my right butterfly hook, or my right foot comes off the floor, and I'm no longer going to use my right foot as a drive leg, I'm going to use my right leg as the elevation leg, as the butterfly hook. My left hand comes off the belt, I slide down, my hand covers the elbow so he can't base with his elbow, and my elbow covers his hand so he can't base with his hand. So now if I ask Ant to base with his right hand on the floor over here, it's well stuck. My right hand comes up here and controls the torso in some way. I'm taking a grip, an over, a, a wrist deep grip over the tricep near the armpit. Now from here, I'm just going to pull with my grip in the armpit and elevate with my right leg in the hip as I commit my weight down to my left shoulder. And now we've had, we have our side to side hook sweep. Now let's say we have an opponent who intelligently realizes what I'm doing and he shifts his weight back to the other side. Well then you go back to the side you initially wanted. Okay, from your end. Um, let's rotate again for this one. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna set my grips. I'm gonna go for my first hook, so he sinks his body weight back and away. Now I realize what's happening, so I'm gonna make my own switch. And as I do so, he, yes, he sinks the weight back and over to that side. Well, then I can come back here, and I can go back to the side I was originally attacking. So you're going to want to be in tune to how your partner is moving their body weight and use hook sweeps to create side-to-side -side dilemmas. When they sink their body weight back to one side to avoid one hook sweep, take them in the opposite direction just by switching your hooks and switching your grips a little bit, right? Go from one torso one post hand to a post hand on this side and a torso hand on this side. Get used to sweeping here, here, and get used to being able to go side to side with your hook sweeps. Okay. The fourth topic I want to cover in this video, dealing with a posted hand. There are two good ways to deal with them, either with a forward shift or with a reverse shrimp. So I'm here, maybe I get my underhook belt grip. I'm here, and, but I made a mistake. I didn't shove Ant's hand all the way in. I was kind of lazy, or maybe Ant was really strong. And as I go to hook sweep him, he gets his left hand to the floor, just like so, okay? So now I've got his hips elevated a little bit, the hand's on the floor. One good way I can deal with this is a forward shrimp. I can come over, I can cover his wrist with my elbow, and his elbow with my hand, and I can do a forward shift from here. We're going to talk more about a forward shift next week, but essentially all it is is I'm going to first start with a knee pull, and then I'm going to extend my legs, and I come up to a seated position. When I come up to a seated position, notice how my grip over his arm sucked in, so my elbow controls his wrist, and my hand controls his elbow. And now, when I commit my right shoulder down to the floor, I have this well better bound up. So as Ant tries to reach to the floor a second time with his left hand, it's not happening. So we have a forward shift to counter a posted hand. One more time. The reason this works is because it unweights his hand. From right here, I go to sweep, he plants a hand. I'm not gonna be able to pull this hand in. There's too much weight on it. I have to unweight the hand. Watch what happens when I do a forward shift. The hand comes off the floor, and that's what I'm looking for. Once the hand's off the floor, it becomes very easy to manipulate again. But if it posts to the floor, I'm never going to be able to move it with all of his weight on it. So I go to sweep, he's going to plant. Now all I'm going to do, I'm going to set my grips, elbow outside the wrist, hand outside the elbow. I'm going to hit a forward shift, and I'm going to wait for his hand to get light. I'm not going to try to pull his hand in here. I'm going to forward shift, and as soon as his hand gets light, that's when I'm going to suck it in. And now I go again. Another way to deal with the posted hand is to block it so that it can only move so far and then push his center of gravity over his base of support using a reverse shrimp, just like we looked at um, as our finishing element uh, in classes this week and in the first uh, hook sweep video. So this time I set my grips. Now I'll do it right. I get my cross grip, I get the belt, he pulls back, I get my cuff grip. I go and he's going to circle that hand to the floor, here. Another option I have 
is to come out here and just cover the outside of the hand. Okay, I can either go elbow to wrist and hand to elbow, otherwise we just cover his hand like so. Now, as amp faces, I'm just gonna continue to reverse turn and push his body weight. And push his body weight over that hand. Find the hand here. And I'm gonna continue to push his body weight over. As Ant continues to reach further out for a further base, he won't be able to because I'm blocking it. And I reverse shrimp, I reverse shrimp, until I eventually take him over that hand. One more time. So I'm here, I set my grips. I go to hit a sweep and Ant gets that hand to the floor. I, made it, I messed up. I'm gonna cover the hand, and I'm gonna continue to drive and reverse shrimp right over that hand, but you can't just stay where you are. You can't sit here and keep trying to lift. It's not gonna work. You have to cover that hand so it can't move anymore, and then you have to push yourself around with that reverse strength and that drive leg. So, a lot of good information we covered so far. We saw two strong grips, overhook, cross collar grip, and the arm trap with the underhook. Then we saw two troubleshooting issues, dealing with an opponent who's sinking their weight back and away, and we saw side-to-side -side hook sweeps for that, and then dealing with a posted hand. And we saw we can solve that with either, with either a forward shift or by blocking the hand and reverse shrimping. Now, another good fail-safe option we can go into, um, the, the fifth thing I want to cover in this video, is going into Ashigurami. Because hook sweeps are predicated on the notion of inside position with my feet, and because his defense to the hook sweep is to come up off his feet, or I'm sorry, come up off his knees and spread his feet and get his knees off the floor, I have the prerequisites for Ashigurami. I have my feet in the inside position, and I have his knees off the floor, so I can always go back into an Ashigurami. And the situation here, I go for my hook sweep and amp bases, and I feel no matter what finish I'm trying to make work, it's not happening. All I need to do is get my head underneath his chest. So I'm going to take my left hand here and I'm going to make a V grip right here in his armpit. Okay? Let's rotate it. I get him up. I want to get my head underneath his chest. So here I can't sweep him. I take a V grip in the armpit and I sort of push his body over mine. My left leg extends and shoots through. I come around the corner, and now I'm in Ashigurami. You guys saw a number of good options from Ashigurami. We could either sweep them right from here, we could go after leg locks right away, or anytime you have Ashigurami, you also have X guard. We swim underneath, we go X guard, and I can complete with an X guard sweep. So just like we looked at in our double kuchigari too, if the double kuchi fails, we have two feet in the inside position, knees off the floor, we can go into X guard. If the hook sweep fails, we have two feet in the inside position, his knees off the floor, we can go into Ashigurami and X guard. All right? Um, let's look at a, how to deal with a, a standing opponent with a hook sweep, all right? Let's say he's standing. This is kind of a creative solution for the hook sweep, but one that I really like. He grips my V, I immediately punch my feet into the bicep so you can't throw my legs to the side and, and pass my guard. Remember, if I have floating feet, you can quickly throw my legs to one side and pass. But if, if I lock my feet into the biceps and he goes to throw my feet to one side or the other, my feet lock in. Now from here, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna break his grip, I'm gonna punch in a lasso. Now with my lasso, rather than hooking into the lap here, I'm gonna hook into the cross hamstring. Can you rotate me so, so you're facing the camera? So from here, I break the grip, I pummel in a lasso, and I make a, I make a hook right there on the cross leg. So the nice thing about this is when Ant tries to posture, I'm controlling the shoulder through my lasso and grip here. And I'm also hooked onto his hip through here. So there's a limit on how much he can posture. He tries to posture up nice and hard, and he can only posture so much. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my left, my right foot to the floor, and now my left knee is gonna pull in toward my chest, 
making a good hook on his hip here. I pull the knee in, and now once I've got the knee pulled in, now I'm going to extend my leg over my left shoulder. And it's going to dump him down to his shoulder. Now from here, I do a leg pendulum to come up and take top position. One more time on the lasso hook speed. I'm here, I lock my feet in, I break ribs. I put in a lasso. Now I put in a butterfly hook right here. It's a cross butterfly hook. Usually in the butterfly hook, we hook into the straight hamstring and hip. This one we're gonna hook into the cross hamstring and hip. Here. Now I take my right foot to the floor to drive like the power. I pull my knee to my chest to get his weight coming in and forward. And then I extend my left leg out over my shoulder and I come up to the top position. Okay. So that is our, our lasso hook sweep. Right? There's one more thing I wanted to show you. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, let me show some different uh, no gi grips. So far, everything we've been doing has been gi grips. Over the back belt, straight lapel, under the arm belt, front belt, um, all these grips that are only really work with the gi. But I want you to be able to work your hook sweeps in the no gi scenario as well. So I'm going to show you guys a couple different gripping strategies to create that head low and hips high scenario from, whence, from where you can use your same three finishes, either the reverse shrimp, the drive leg, or the foot sweep. So some of our nogi options for off balancing. And one nogi gripping option I can do is I can do a wrist elbow two on one, or an elbow two on one. I often make use of two on one grips. Sometimes we'll go two on one wrist, palm down. Sometimes we'll go two on one wrist, palm up. But my favorite two on one arm grip I guess outside of the Kimura, which is a specialized grip, which I really love, is this elbow two on one. I love this grip for, for open guard. Now I use this grip, I'm gonna scoop myself in as I get wrist deep on the grip, and I'm gonna use my wrist to pull his shoulder to my chest. I'm gonna commit my back and my left shoulder down to the floor as my two butterfly hooks elevate. And now we're up here, ready to finish, like we've been learning. Alternatively, I can use an arm drag grip. An elbow two on one, I had my, I had a crossed wrist grip and a straight high of the armpit. And the arm drag, it's just gonna be the opposite. A straight wrist, a cross wrist high in the armpit. So they're very, very similar. It's just different sides, okay? So we're gonna go with a straight wrist here. I can use this arm drag to expose his back. We're gonna look at that uh, at the last week of our open guard chapter where we study arm drags. But this arm drag grip will also help me get him out of balance for the hook sweep. So I get a straight wrist grip. I take his wrist into the center, I get an arm drag grip. Now from here I pull myself in, I get his shoulder to my chest, and I take him up in the air. Now from here I can go and finish. Okay. Another grip that I can have off of this is I can, I can still use an arm trap. I can come in, I can go elbow to elbow and grab an underhook. I could either do that here from a seated position, like we saw earlier. Otherwise, I could actually do that mid off balance too, where I come in, I get him out of balance, and now I can punch in my underhook from here, and I have that same arm trap. Ham tries to take his right hand to the floor, and it's well caught because my elbow dominates his elbow from the outside. If Ant realized he can't base with this arm. So he uses this hand to try to base in this quadrant that's gonna give us other opportunities. Where I can pass the arm by, and now I have arm triangle. If he stays right where he is, I can choke him. If he comes toward me, flatten me out, I can use my hooks to sweep him with more hook sweeps. So once you hit him with the hook sweep, He's not going to want to come into you, he's going to start going away from you to avoid going into the hook sweep. So he's going to go away from the hook sweep. And that's going to allow me, um, base out with your right leg, to start to push him away and take the back. Okay. Um, shoulder crunch is another really good one. Let's say I get in to my arm trap here. 
he bases with that uh, left hand in the wrong quadrant over here. Uh, uh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. He, he bases right here, that's good enough. I can lock a pinch headlock, and I can work hook sweeps for a pinch headlock. Otherwise, I could take my hand on the near side of his head, I could control wrist to wrist, and I could glue his shoulder to my chest. This is probably one of the most mechanically strong hook sweeps there is out there, the shoulder crunch hook sweep. If I keep this shoulder literally glued to my chest, and he tries to pull his head up and away, it's super hard. <laughs> now I can leverage my elbow into his neck, okay? And that's gonna start to lift him up and over. And we have a shoulder crunch hook sweep, okay? That's all the time I have for this bonus video. Um, but we, we covered a lot of good information in this bonus video content. Okay, that's bonus video from the hook sweep. Well, let's go back to the initial hook sweep. The hook sweep, and in truth, all techniques from the bottom position, are a sequential three-step sequence. Establish a working grip, a grip that is going to allow you to off-balance your opponent, and then once your opponent is out of balance, complete the technique, be it a submission, be it a sweep, be it a back take, whatever. Grip, off balance, and execute. And in this special bonus video I'm giving you guys, we covered seven topics. We covered two specialized grips in the gi with the overhook cross collar grip and with the arm trap. And remember, if I get the arm trap and he freezes his hand, just to establish that cross collar grip so you have that overhook cross collar grip again. And both of those grips, overhook cross collar and the arm trap are both incredibly strong. Then we looked at troubleshooting. If we have an opponent who sinks their weight back and away, use side to side hook sweeps as many times as you need to. Start right, you might finish left. You might go right, he sinks his weight to your left, so you go left and then he comes back to your right, you go back to the right. Working the side to side hook sweep action based on the pressure and the weight your partner's giving you is going to be a skill you're going to work on in time. Then we learn to deal with the post of hand. If he gets that hand to the floor, we're going to either use a forward shift to unweight the hand and suck it in, or we're going to cover the hand from the outside and then use a reverse shrimping and drive leg action to drive his center of gravity outside of his base of support, outside of that post of hand. And we've seen if we get his two knees off the floor, because I already have my two hooks in the inside position, we always have the option to go into Ashigarami, out of the hook sweeps. Same thing we do with the double Kujigari, because we have inside position with the feet and two knees off the floor, or even one knee off the floor, if we get that much, we can go into Ashigarami on that leg. Then we saw the notion of applying a hook sweep on a standing opponent by using a lasso. So I use the lasso and my butterfly hook to control his posture pulling the knee to the chest and extending my leg over my shoulder for a good lasso hook sweep finish. And then finally, we looked at some no-gi options for you, 